Hello guys, today I'm going to talk a bit about the progressivity of the mountain bike. I already talked about this on uh, episode 1 and episode 2, but today I will take an example using this bike, the Black Market Rome. Uh, since this bike is uh, so far the most progressive bike that I already saw. In the next slide I have a quick video showing how the linkage works and uh, take attention to the, the shock rate. You will see that the shock moves quite slow at the beginning of the travel and then it, go, it starts to move really quick when the, the suspension is going to, to bottom out. So check this. Okay, so see, see the rate of the shock link. Okay, as you can see, the shock moves a little bit and then it moves really fast at the end. So this means that the, the bike is, is progressive. Okay, in this diagram you can see that better. As you can see, the shock moves just a bit at the beginning and then it moves really quick at the end of, of the travel. So this is the leverage, leverage ratio graph. Uh, so you have here the specialized Enduro, which is a pretty linear bike, a flat line. And then you have the graph for the, for the leverage ratio of the black market Rome. As you can see, it starts with a pretty high leverage ratio and then it will end up with a pretty low, like 1.6 uh, of leverage ratio. So at the beginning of the travel we have uh, a leverage of 4.2 to 1, meaning that you have like a leverage of 4.2 versus 1, okay? So a pretty big uh, leverage. And at the end of the travel you have a pretty small uh, leverage, three times smaller leverage. So this means that um, at the beginning of the travel it will be really easy to lift, to lift the, the stone or to compress the shock while at the end of the travel since the leverage is so small it will become quite hard to lift um, the stone or to compress the shock. So this is what gives progressivity to, to the bike. Moreover since you have a very high uh, leverage ratio at the beginning of the travel, that means that you need to use uh, a heavier stone or a, a heavier spring rate or more pressure in the air shock in order to achieve the same sag when compared to a linear bike. Okay, because you have a very high leverage, so you need a bigger a bigger rock to 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 have the same sag. And I'm pretty sure that many of you don't know this, but on very progressive bikes, what happens is that the sag at the, sh at the shock is not the same as the real sag at the wheel. So, most of you, what everyone does, is putting the sag in the shock, either 30 or 33 or 25, I don't care, but usually you select the, you turn the sag at the shock and you don't care about the sag at the wheel. But on very progressive bikes, what happens is that the, the sag at the wheel is it's higher than the sag at the, sh at the shock. In this case, the bike is very progressive and the difference is quite high. So if you want to overcome this, and if you want really to have a, a real 30% of sag at the wheel, which is what matters, uh, you have to use a, a bigger stone, or meaning you have to use uh, higher spring rate. So in this case for this bike achieving a sag of 23% at the shock gives a sag of 30% uh, of at the wheel. Okay, but let's forget that because it, what everyone does is measure the sag at the shock because it's really hard to measure the sag at the wheel. So at the end of the day what happens is that you end up with more, with more sag at the wheel than at the shock. So your rear suspension will become uh, more smooth, more soft because of that. So here we have a comparison between a linear bike 
for instance the specializing in Dur, which is almost linear and the black mac and the black market rom so this graph depicts basically depicts the the force that you need to do at the wheel to start moving the wheel okay okay so as you can see the progressive bike with a 30% of sagging in the shock will be much smoother much softer okay will be much softer than the linear bike in the first 100 millimeters of travel okay so this zone here all this zone here okay behind the 100 millimeters of travel will be a zone much softer than most of normal bikes okay then after this point the bike becomes pretty stiffer okay so you have here the stiff zone where the um, the progressive bike becomes very stiff and very hard to to bottom out so this is the ramp up effect so keep in mind that in this case the the home have a sag of 40 percent at the wheel so what happens when you want to have a 30 percent uh, sag at the wheel so in this case you have to use a higher spring rate as we, as we as i showed you previously so what happens is this the progressive bike the orange line will become really similar to the linear bike uh, in the uh, the first part of the travel okay behind the sag, sag point then the bike becomes very really really stiff okay it's, so it becomes really hard to bottom out this bike with with such an, an eye force to bottom out the, the bike so at the end of the day you have here a balance between the softness of the suspension and the force needed to bottom out so basically some progressivity is always good but when too much you need to run a very soft suspension to get the full travel so you get here a compromise between the initial softness and the final stiffness and and the more progressivity the bike has the more you have initial softness and final stiffness okay so a very progressive bike will be very soft at, at the beginning and a very stiff at the end of the travel so here you have the well-known uh, table of progressivity and as you can see the black market rom is pretty high with uh, around 300 percent of progressivity so this bike will be really hard to bottom out even if you increase the sack and now I did a cool comparison between uh, these, these enduro bikes with the downhill bikes the downhill bikes that I already analyzed so far so this was the result okay so on average an enduro bike has a progressivity of 20% while the downhill bikes have on average 20% more of progressivity than the enduro bikes so this makes pretty sense because in downhill you have a more aggressive usage so you need a bit more progressivity and that's it guys so happy bottom outs and see you next time bye